So this whole unit that we've been discussing is covering graphing. Well, the next thing that we want to figure out how to graph is circles. So this video and the next few videos will be covering over how to graph circles. And to come up with the appropriate graphs of circles, we need to discuss what the equations of these circles are in the first place. So since most of us are visual learners, let's start by just looking at a visual of a circle. We all know what a circle looks like, but since I'm talking about graphing a circle, I need to know more information than just your basic circle. So notice I have my blue circle graphed on the rectangular coordinate system because that's what we're going to be doing. The key parts of the circle here are the center of the circle, which is the red dot here, and that is basically just called the center. Whenever we graph these, that's one of the key elements that we need to know. The other element that we need to know is the distance from the center of a circle to any point on the edge of the circle. And that distance is, of course, labeled by R, which stands for the radius. Now, another piece of information that you should definitely be aware of is sometimes it doesn't give you specifically the radius, Sometimes it gives you the distance all the way across the circle. So it might give you this distance here. And that distance is labeled as the diameter, the distance all the way across. And of course, to get the radius from the diameter, we just divide the diameter in half. So if you're ever given an example with the diameter in it and you need to calculate the radius, you just take your diameter and divide it by two. So now that we know the key parts of the circle, let's figure out what the circle formula is. And it's given by this over here. X minus H quantity squared plus Y minus K quantity squared is equal to R squared. So we said the key parts of our circle are the center of the circle here. And we need to know where it's graphed at. So we label that as the ordered pair, where the x-coordinate is h and the y-coordinate is k. So that goes here, h and k. The distance of our radius is then given by r, and so that goes here, our radius squared. Now, what are x and y? x and y are just generic points on any circle. So 99% of the time, you are just going to leave these as x and y. Just note that these x and y stand for any point on the edge of the circle. So I have it labeled as this one over here on the top left, but really it's any point around this circle here. But again, most of the time when we see it in the formula, it's written as just the standard x and y. We have numbers put in for h, k, and r. So let's see a simple example of this. It's given us an ordered pair, negative 3, 2, which stands for x and y, and it wants to know, is it on this circle given in this equation? And notice that equation fits the exact same equation that we saw back here. Well, we can really think about this as center and radius, or we can just substitute these numbers into this equation and see if it comes out to be a true equation. If it is a true equation, then that means that point is on the edge of the circle. If it's not, then that point is not on the edge of the circle. So let's just plug it in and see what happens. So my x is negative 3 minus 2 squared plus substitute 2 in for y minus 7 squared. And we want to see is that equivalent to 4 or not. The first one, negative 3 minus 2, gives me negative 5 squared, which simplifies to be 25. The second, 2 minus 7, also gives me negative 5 squared, which simplifies to be 25. And we know when we add 25 and 25 together, that gives us 50, which is clearly not equivalent to 4. So my answer to this question is, is this point on the circle? And the answer is no, it is not on that circle. Now I'll come back to this eventually, and we'll show you how to graph this and how to prove that this is not on the circle. But let's do some other examples first. 
Example two gives us a bit of information about our circle, and it wants us to do two things with it. It wants us to write the equation in standard form, which is this up here. That's the way I gave you the formula. And it wants you to graph this circle. So I'm going to do this one for you, and hopefully in the next example you can work this on your own. So my center is given as negative 4, 6. Well, the center stands for the H and the K value in your equation. Your radius is 2, so of course we will plug in 2 for our R value. And that's all we need to do is plug in our H, K, and R value and do a teeny tiny bit of simplification. So I have X minus my H value of negative 4, quantity squared, plus Y minus my K value of 6, quantity squared, is equal to my radius, which was given as 2 squared. So I want to leave it in this format as much as possible, because that's what it means by standard form, but I still want to simplify as much as I can. So the things that I'm going to simplify is I'm going to cancel out my double negatives here, and I will actually square this value there. So my final answer is x plus 4 squared plus y minus 6 squared is equal to 4. So that's the most simplified version of my standard form of this equation. To graph this, it's actually easier to graph it with the given information rather than with our equation. So we're just going to use this here and go from there. My center of the circle is negative 4, 6. So I count left, four, up, six units. And since my radius is two, then I'm just going to count two in every direction from my radius. So two here and two in every direction. Then I get to connect these dots and hopefully I come up with something that resembles a circle. So I have come up with my equation in standard form, and I have just graphed this circle here. So let's look at example three. It actually gives us the different set of information that we did in example two. Example two gave us the center and the radius, and our job was to come up with the equation. Here, they give us the equation, and our job is to come up with the center and the radius. Once we have that center and radius, then it's going to be fairly easy to graph this circle. Since I have the formula written up here for you, I believe that you can do this on your own. So I suggest that you pause the video and see what answers you come up with. So I'm going to tell you the answer that most students come up with. Whenever I ask this question the first time, most students tell me that the center is negative 4, positive 2, and that my radius is 7. So if you did this, you actually got an incorrect answer. You got the correct answer for radius, that is a correct answer, but you actually got an incorrect answer for center. And let me try and explain why. When I take my generic formula of x minus h squared plus y minus k squared is equal to radius squared, notice how your subtraction symbols line up. The x lines up, the negative lines up, so that means when you're trying to pick out your h value, it's actually positive 4. So your center is not this here, your center is positive 4. Same thing in the y value, my y value lines up, my negative actually doesn't line up. So when I pick up my k value, I have to actually pick it out to be the opposite sign. So my center is at positive 4 and negative 2. And that is because our formula has subtractions in it. So whatever sign you see for H and K, just note that it will always be the opposite sign. Now, to graph this, I'm going to use the information that we have here. Start by counting your center at positive 4, negative 2. And then with your radius, you just count 7 units in every direction.
So right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have to go beyond the chart here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so on and so forth. And below. So those points are going to identify the outskirts of my circle. So if I connect the dots, I should get something that resembles a circle. Typically very difficult to draw by hand, but if you get something close, you'll be fine. So I have identified the correct center and the correct radius, which also identifies the correct graph of my circle here. Notice if you get your signs mixed up on your center, you will also actually get an incorrect graph here. It will give you the wrong graph in your final answer. So now that we've seen this here, let's go back and let's double check that example one by graphing it. So if I look at my equation of the circle here, I find that my center of this circle is given by positive 2 and positive 7. And my radius of this circle is given by the square root of this number here. So the radius is given by 2. So if I check this by graphing it, my center is again at 2, 7, and my radius is at 2. When I graph this, I identify my center. I count my radius in two directions from my center, and there gives my circle for this graph. Now, if I want to figure out if my point, negative 3, 2, is on this circle, it has to be on this blue circle here. So let's just see where my point, negative 3, 2, is, which is clear over here, and we can see that that purple point is definitely not on your blue circle. And that is why we got the answer of no back here. So we have just confirmed that we got the right answer in example one. I'm going to stop this video here, and in the next video, I'll be doing a couple more examples dealing with equations and graphs of circles.